So Grover's algorithm. Um, so I'm going to take a look at Grover's algorithm um, from an intuitive perspective. Now, I've read about Grover's algorithm before, um, and I think that there might be some in, some interesting things we can extract out of it. So let's let's take a look at it. So um, I, I kind of I can't avoid just reading unstructured search down here, and I think that is actually a really interesting example because that's a really typical um, computer science um, problem, and so. If this is an algorithm that's supposed to solve that in a way that it's better and faster or whatever, uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at what is the underlying um, quantumness that the algorithm is using, and 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 how can we extract that as an in, a, a sort of an intuition bite? Um, <clears throat> and then I'll do sort of a two-minute overview on that later on in another video. So you're like heard one of the more blah 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 is a classic computer superior speed searching databases. Um, Grover's algorithm demonstrates this capability. So it's about speed. Okay. So I'll walk you through the description of a search problem. In structured search, suppose they are given a large list of n items. Among these items is one item with a unique property that we wish to locate. We'll call this one the winner, W. So that's what we see here. We will see marking here in pink. To find the pink box, the marked item, using classical computation, one would have to check at least half of the items in the boxes. Um, and in the worst case, n. Uh, so all of them. <clears throat> On a quantum computer, however, you can find that roughly in the square root of n steps with Grover's amplitude amplification trick. I like how I like how you use the word trick for that. Um, okay, so quadratic speed up is indeed a substantial time saver, blah blah blah. Um, so additionally, the algorithm does not use the least internal structure. That is actually really cool, which makes it generic. Hmm. Okay. So Oracle. How will the list items be provided to the quantum computer? A common way to encode such a list is in terms of a function that returns zero for all unmarked items and one for the winner. Okay, so this is already sort of what we've seen in other algorithms as well. Um, the input is given to us in a way that it's already sort of, um, uh, it, it actually makes it easy to exploit. So, so I see already, because I don't know which one was that, whether it was Deutsch Yosa or Simon's algorithm. Um, where it was a similar thing was like find find that item in a list where there's like a where the actual value of the function equals to one or something like that. So uh, to use a quantum computer for this problem, we must provide items in a superposition to this function. So we encode the function into a unitary matrix called an oracle. Okay, so basically that's also what's happening in other in other in, in other algorithms. It's like they okay, so they call it an oracle. You encode the function in Oracle, and that's kind of your your list, so to say. So first, we we choose a, a binary encoding of the items such that um, uh, na, 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 so such that x and w belong to zero and one. Okay, now we can represent it in terms of qubits on a quantum computer. Uh, so when we define the okay, so I've seen that before um, the notation, right? So kind of the f x. So the value of the function as an exponential, as, as the exponential, um, as the, the the sort of the power, uh, the minus one to the power of the value of the function, which basically means whenever that zero, uh, you know, that stays positive, and whenever that's one, which is the item we're finding, it's minus. So basically, what this is saying is, um, and let's let's just uh, open open up. Uh, another tab with the actual circuit. Um, so what this is saying is basically uh, let's uh, let's flag that. Let, let's flag the item, right? So let's say um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with like maybe three. Um, let's keep it simple. So so basically I, I'm guessing, I don't know what this is saying is like the input, right? So the oracle is something like that where you've got a superposition. And then, uh, and then we're gonna flag. I don't know, just randomly, we're gonna flag. Uh, so here we have too many of them flags. But I think if you do something like that, you're gonna reduce exactly. So if you do like this and like that, no, how can I? Uh, maybe, maybe. So I don't know exactly how to do that, but maybe I don't know how to do that with three. Um, <clears throat> but basically, essentially, what you're doing is 
uh, you wanna you wanna flag just uh, just one item. So maybe if you do something like that, maybe I don't know. I'm just guessing, and then uh, this goes to this guy over here. No, what if this is set now? I'm just playing with that. I honestly haven't. I, I don't know what I'm doing really. Um, other than I want to cancel that, so maybe. I don't know how to cancel that. That would be interesting to find a way to cancel that. Um, so, but you know what I mean, right? So in this case, we would have two items flag, uh, flag. So we want to find a way to flag uh, to flag just one item, and that's kind of the the way you're giving the input. So maybe I'll just uh, maybe with a control node or something like that. Uh, now with this, you're just shifting. Anyway, um, so back back to the back to the algorithm. So we 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 are basically giving uh, giving that uh, the list and uh, and then there's just one item which is flagged um, using this position, right? So, um, but up 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 up. It's in a standard basis states. We said. We see that if X is an unmarked item, the oracle does nothing to the state. However, when we apply the oracle to the base state, it maps it to minus one. Dramatically, the unitary matrix corresponds to the reflection about the origin of the mark. Yeah, I don't care. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I if I explained if that's the, really what it's supposed to do. Right, let's move on. Um, so this is the first step. So we are flagging. So we know that we have the function in such a way that the item we're looking for is flagged in a way that it has a negative uh, sign, a negative amplitude, negative phase. Um, and so then we go and it says amplitude amplification. So I'm assuming what this is going to do, it's just going to amplify that. This means it's going to, I don't know how, but basically it's going to make the probability of that flagged state be bigger than any other one. So then probably by doing that, when you, you measure it repetitively, you, you know you're going to get that as a result. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice, um, that's pretty neat. Um, how does the algorithm work? If we're looking at the list of items, we have no idea where the marked item is. Therefore, any guess of its location is as good as any other. Yeah, so we've got like a uniform superposition, good. Um, then, um, what else do we have here? If at the point we measure the standard basis, it will collapse in any other states. Um, mm -mm, so it could be expected. Hence, an average we would do like the same n times. Enter the procedure called amplitude amplification, which is how a quantum computer significantly enhances this probability. This procedure stretches out the amplitude of the mark item which shrinks the other item's amplitude so that measuring the final state, because I guess this is sort of the probabilities have to be kept, uh, have, have to conserve. That's kind of the, one of the principles. If you're ampl amplifying or increasing a probability of a certain state, the other ones decreases. So it's not that you have to balance it. You have to balance it out by hand. It just happens naturally. So it has a nice geometrical interpretation, which I probably is going to be confusing. Um, and I'm not so sure if I want to really stick to it, but let's go through this. Um, we generate a rotation in a two-dimensional plane. It, it just confuses people, or at least it confuses me. They're not quite perpendicular because it increases precision with amplitude and blah. So, uh, yeah, OK. But um, I guess, so step zero, the amplitude amplification procedure starts out in the uniform superposition. So this is what we, this is what we, uh, what I showed, right? So kind of, I mean, so to say, so you've got that and then that's kind of uh, flagged. This here, uh, I don't know. Um, the, the left graphic response to them, okay. So that's sort of the, the geometrical explanation. Um, and the right graphic is a bar graph with the amplitudes, okay. So we apply the oracle reflection. Uh, so sorry, this is where we've got like the minus one and, and, and all those are plus, right? And then there's like an or like sort of a reflection. We now apply an additional reflection. So it seems like so. This is what's happening is now you've got this as a like um, it, it kind of. It's interesting. 
so now let's say it's positive is this what they're saying but we're just like flipped it somehow i guess this is going to be a game of um harm arts in a way that um for example if you have like uh let, let's let's say you have like zero zero you have like zero one and one zero like just give an example right so I think I think we're gonna play with Hadamards in a way that like we have we're gonna get some signs. So some of those things will get cancelled and then some of those things would get just like doubled, right? So so you're gonna have like two times minus ten, like so minus two times ten, uh, one zero. So this is gonna give you a higher probability in risk in, in, in uh comparison to the other states. I think that's gonna be something like that. So instead of canceling out completely, that's gonna that's gonna be something that happens like this. So the two reflection the reflections always correspond to a rotation, blah, blah, blah. Rotates the initial state. I mean, maybe that geometrical explanation helps to understand the circuit at the end of the day. So we'll see if we have to come back to this, but it just, um, I like to see it in terms of things canceling out versus adding up. Um, since the average amplitude has been lowered, yeah, sure. After the step is transformed. Okay, so we've got something here. After T steps, the state will be transformed. How many times do we need to apply the rotation? It turns out, ah, ah, that's important. Okay, so the thing is this rotation, so this operation of amplifying has to be applied probably many times so that it's big enough because I'm guessing after applying it once, uh, it might not be big enough. So you still will get a really noisy result as in like a lot of false positives. Um, because the probability of the other possible solutions will still not be um, small enough. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, okay, so this is the okay, so this is the circuit basically. So okay, so this is basically I see. Um, so we've got a so we've got a Hadamard. So that's the first step is a Hadamard, and I guess this is the function, the oracles. I guess this is like encoding, uh, flagging the item. Okay. I find it quite interesting that this is inside the box that gets repeated. So I'm assuming, as I said, that if we think of, it means it's flagged over and over again. And then, and then that portion here probably um, takes care of, Amplifying that. Uh, let's see. The Kiskit implementation. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We create a face oracle that will mark states 000 and 111 as the results. Why two of them? I don't know. Okay, but that's, you see, but that's flagging. That's the same. Mm -hmm. And that is the same mechanism. Uh, so there's another video that I've made on a quantum uh, artificial neuron, and I, I realized that pattern was there as well. Um, and I don't I haven't really figured out yet what's the in, intuitive way of building that, but this is like so uh, if I build that and those things are control Zs and they are both with black dots because the control Z affects both qubits. Um, so for some people, it's a bit counterintuitive to kind of like do this whole thing here with a Z, because that seems to imply that only only this bit, the target bit, the target qubit is affected. But this is telling you. So if I build that and I say uh, so, um, mm -mm -mm. so now we now we're gonna add the Zs. So let me go back here. So we're gonna add three Zs. And then we're gonna do, so now we have, we've got four states flagged and then now we're gonna do uh, the, con the control sets as specified in here. So first we've got this, then we've got this, and then we've got this, but this one here is actually this. And, hmm, really? Seems like, but that flags a lot of stuff, really. Ah, interesting. Okay, so they are, it's the other way around. So the, uh, okay, so they're flagging, okay. They're flagging everything that is not, so it's zero, 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 and one, one, one are the ones left in blue. So in this case, it's like the positive ones. Okay, mm -hmm. whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if you do it this way or the other way, I guess. Um, so next, 
but so here they are flagging zero 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 and one one one. I don't know why. Uh, I thought it was about finding one one result, but I guess I guess that's that's about it. And then the next step of the circuit for inversion about the average. Uh, we'll need to define a function that creates a multiple controlled, a multiple controlled Z gate, multiple controlled Z gate. Uh, oh, okay. That is the, that is what I cannot. So that is what I cannot do with the with the composer. Um, here's the circuit. Oh come on. Here's the circuit. So n controlled and then okay, so that's it's I'll have to find because it's something I can obviously I cannot obviously implement. But I maybe if I maybe I can do a smaller version of that. Maybe I can maybe I can try to do something like uh you know, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, and, and say like what if I do this and then I say we have only two. Right, and two, and now we have this. <clears throat> okay, so let's say here we're flying in zero zero. I mean, I'm gonna try to make the example myself. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna try to make it myself. Uh, and so, so then I would say the circuit here would be, and this is what the amplification thing. So I'm assuming it comes afterwards. So I would just apply Hadamard's. <clears throat> What's happening here? So we're back in square one. I mean, uh, what we had before, and now it's looking like. So I guess I guess what I probably have to rep what I probably have to replicate is is that portion of the circuit, and I'm not really sure that's what's really supposed to happen. But so I do. Um, so I basically do x and x and it's like a Hadamard and a control knot and a Hadamard. So uh, Hadamard, control knot, Hadamard. Um, and then we have got x, x, and then two Hadamards. x, x, and two Hadamards. Uh, what is going on? Oh, you see, zero zero. So that's the that's what we flagged in the very beginning. That's what we flagged in here. Okay, that's cool. So my example seems to work. So that's what we flagged in here, zero zero, and and so this has done the amplification and kind of one iteration has been enough. It seems, but probably because the the example is a small one. So, but I I don't understand this. So let's let's see what's going on here. Um. Okay, perfect. Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at this a bit more in detail. 